Even if you think you know everything about keyboards in GarageBand, there are some pretty cool things that you may not be aware of. So we're going to jump in and take a look at everything you need to know about using keyboards in GarageBand iOS. Let's go. So to add a keyboard here in GarageBand, you go to the keyboard section. You create a new song, you hit the keyboard button, and you're in and away. But to change the keyboard, you can tap on this button in the middle here. Now, if you're on an iPhone, you need to tap in the top left. There'll be a little down arrow, and you select your instrument. But we're here on an iPad, so we'll go, and we'll go to our main categories. Now, your standard keyboards are going to be in keyboards, and uh, the most classic keyboard are our pianos. So let's grab the classical grand piano and take a little dive around here to start with. So here we go. We've got our classical grand. We've got our keys that we can play right here. And we've got a whole bunch of other options in here as well. So let's talk about all the different options that we have and how we use each one of them. So how do we actually add the note labels to start with? Now, this one's actually outside of GarageBand itself. You might think, oh, it should be up here in the settings. It's in a separate GarageBand settings section. So to get to there, we need to flick up here and go to our settings app. And in the settings app down the left hand side, if you scroll down, you'll have all of your different apps. We're going to tap GarageBand and we're going to come down and we're going to tap Keyboard Note Labels. Turn that one on. And then when we come back to GarageBand, like magic, boom, we now know each and every key and what it's called, which is kind of cool. So get your Keyboard Note Labels on there. It can just help you with some of the other stuff that we're going to show here. What about wanting to change your octaves? Well, because we're using a touch screen here, We've only got like two or three octaves that are going to be displayed. Now, it will depend on how big your keyboard is as to how many octaves are displayed. And on the iPhone, unfortunately, you can't change it. On iPad, you can. We'll show you that in a moment. But to change your octave, you can tap the down button in the top left here to go all the way down. Or you can go all the way up if you want some very high notes. And you'll see there that it'll actually change. So this is C5, C6, and C7. And as we go back down towards our middle C we can see what C's that we're playing there. So that makes it super handy to adjust your octaves there. What about this sustain button here? Well, this is an automatic sustain pedal. So I'll pause here to say you can plug in a MIDI keyboard and you can plug that directly into your iPhone or your iPad. You will need something like the Lightning to USB 3 adapter, or if you're using a more recent iPad Pro, a USB-C to USB adapter to actually plug in your, uh, your MIDI keyboard. And there's videos that I have here on the channel that can help you out with that. But if you don't have that plugged in, you want some sustain. So ordinarily, we hit the, the notes and they're quite, kind of staccato, but if we want them to be a bit more legato, we slide on this slider and now, we can get some nice sustain sounds there and then leave the app. Turn it off. You can turn it off. So you can hold it there by holding down the sustain button and playing. Or you can slide it on to make it stay on. Very cool. There's a mode switch here between glissando and scroll. So glissando means that when you scroll your finger, it'll do that. When you change that to scroll though, you can move around the keyboard by scrolling up and down. Now, other instruments have other changes there that you can do here. So why don't we choose a different instrument here? Let's go into our electric piano so we can show you the other function that we have here. If we go to the electric piano and we come down here, this one doesn't have it either. <laughs> Let's find one that does, shall we? We'll find a, a keyboard sound that actually has it. I think some of these older ones. What about this 80 signature keyboard? Does this one have it here? Yes, so this one here, Sounds like the Doogie Howser keyboard, doesn't it? So this one here, we have the glissando and the scroll, but we also have pitch, which means when we tap here, you can actually, you can actually control the pitch by just sliding up and down on the keys, which is kind of cool. So that's all of the options that you have in the center part there. Let's move on. Next one here is our scale. Now, this one is a little bit of a hidden gem. If you haven't used the scale option before, let's just say that you don't really know you don't really know your different scales. So you wanted to play a C minor, but you don't know that it... You don't actually know what notes need to be played in a C minor scale. Well, guess what? We can actually hit the scale button here and we can turn it into a minor by just coming on down here and we can just say, yep, let's make it a minor scale. And now check this out. 
you don't need to know anything about that scale. Now, if you want to change the key signature, come up to the top here and you can change it. Now, we've, it's in C major, but if you choose a minor, it'll still give you the minor there. The other cool things you can do if you want to do some wicked solos on some of your things, you can use things like the pentatonic scale, which is this one here. So if you're playing along to like a blue, a 12 bar blues and you want to do a Very cool. So you don't have to be stuck in that keyboard. And there's even things like Japanese and Mixedalonian, all of the funky stuff there. So you have the ability to use a scale there with your keyboard option. Next one along is that key control. So if you're on an iPad, this will be a lot more funky than if you're on an iPhone because you don't have a lot of these functions, unfortunately, just because of the screen real estate size on the iPhone. But on the iPad, check out this. We can go to our 80s synth style double keyboard look. <laughs> so you can play if you wanted to play this and you wanted to have a, a low down here, you can like do your... Hey, yeah, if you wanted to play that, you could do that. We could turn it back to a single keyboard there. And here it is. We've also got what I like to call the fat fingers forgiver, which means if you, like me, have fat fingers, you can go to the chungus keys. And now you got all that screen real estate there. If you've got tiny little skinny fingers, then you can go to the skinny fingers. I don't recommend it because you're going to have that. Not cool. Uh, so I normally leave it in the middle there or over here. You've also got your velocity control. You can turn that on if you want to be able to manually change your velocity here. You can slide that up or you can slide it down to get a lower velocity sound. Uh, you can turn that one on there. And you also have the key controls function here, which just means that in that middle section, it's going to remove it. So I don't know why you'd ever want to just remove that. But in case you never want to be able to control how your keys are working, you can. <laughs> Hooray. Let's talk about the arpeggiator. Why? Because the arpeggiator is probably one of the coolest functions in GarageBand keys going around. So let's turn on our arpeggiator. In fact, let's go back to scale mode. And because this could be fun to play around with. We'll go back to that minor scale and we'll, uh, we'll de-chungusify these keys. We'll make them regular again. There we go. Uh, let's turn on the arpeggiator. You just tap on that one, you hit run. And now you can decide what note order you want here. Let's do, say, up and down. What uh, note rate we want. Yeah, we'll leave it as a 16th note. And what octave range? We'll go two octaves. And now when we tap, look at that. That's pretty cool. And here's the thing. If we're in a scale, we can tap any two notes and we're going to get a pretty cool sounding arpeggio. There you go. Sounds a bit Stranger Things, doesn't it? Uh, no, no, no copyright infringement. <laughs> so the arpeggio can be cool. And if, if you're playing around with this, in fact, let's let's use this to create something. You can you can even use like 30 second notes to just create really cool kind of background things in here. So let's do this and let's make it go uh, just up. So we'll do this and we'll bring it down a little bit because we're doing that. And we'll say select the... We can create a pretty cool effect here. Let's hit the record button here. Hold down the notes. See what you can do here? With no knowledge. This is why I love GarageBand on the my iOS. With zero knowledge, you can create some cool stuff like that. Yeah, and then here's what it does. It actually records that in for you. Look at that. It records in all the notes there. So you can change it around and you can adjust it here to your heart's content. So let's just say that we didn't want it that fast. We can halve the speed. Make it a wee bit more sensible, yeah? Yeah. So there's some cool options that you have there in your arpeggio. Play around with it. You'll enjoy it. The last note, the last option we have down here is our chords mode. Chords mode, super duper handy. Again, especially if... You're not a you're not a big music person, or you're learning your theory, but you're not quite there yet. You can um, we can play along here. So let's um let's hit record and record in some chords here. So we can just play along. Hit the record button there.
we uh, forgot to put the metronome on. So because we didn't have the metronome on there, let's quantize this, which is another function we have here in GarageBand. We'll go into our track settings, into quantization, into straight, and because we're just playing quarter notes, I think, basically, we'll just put it to eighth note just to make sure. A little artifact in there, but that's okay. We'll leave it for now. So that's a cool way that we can actually get some chords in there, again, without knowing anything. The other note, the other option we have here is our autoplay. So to, to show you autoplay, let's um let's duplicate out this one. Let's use some of the learnings that we have already by changing the instrument now that we have that one there. So we'll click or tap on the 80s keyboard there. And let's go into uh, some alchemy synth this time. So we'll go into the alchemy synth and we'll uh, we'll get a lead sound. Why don't we go with the airy synth lead for this one? And uh, we'll, we'll do some autoplay of our airy synth lead. So you can use the... You can use the same functions that you use there, but because we know we use C minor and then we went into F minor, we can actually make the Airy Synth lead do some cool things with our autoplay. So let's turn this on. Let's go to autoplay one and see how this works in with our original sound. We'll hit record and then we'll hit our C minor. Get ready to change it to F minor. We didn't change it there. And our quantization was off because we played that first part so, so poorly. The other thing we can do here though with autoplay is change this around. And you get other cool sounds. We can then go and do number three. And everything, as you go on to, through these different autoplays, it gets slightly more complex. Pretty cool, yeah. So what I'll do here is uh, we'll, we'll delete out. We'll use some autoplay to actually make this good because Pete's original chords there were terrible. So we'll delete that and I'll show you how we can use some autoplay together to create a cool sort of bed here. So we'll go to the first one and we'll turn on the autoplay on this sucker. We'll make this just an autoplay number one and we can uh, hit the record button. And this time we can do both the bass and the chop end. And then we'll bring the chop to F minor leave the bass on the C and then go back to the C. That's going to be better. Now what we can do is just throw over the top some autoplay on this one. And you can see how you can quickly, again, without a whole lot of effort, get yourself a nice sound. Now let's just move... Yeah, we'll make this more of an 80s kind of sound and we'll turn it down just a bit because shh, it's a bit loud. So that can go down to there. We'll come back to this one and let's hit the button on the autoplay and record in the same chords. Nice, yeah. Autoplay, who knew? And uh, you can experiment and change those around because then, of course, you can come in here, you can edit those, and you can change any of the notes you want if you want it to be a bit more of a customized kind of sound. So very, very cool option there with your autoplay. So that's your basic fundamentals of all of your different keyboard sounds. But I wanted to then show you how we can explore some of the different ways to use the keyboard to play in some sounds. So we've already kind of covered a few of these, but just so that you can uh, just so that you can get a full view of what we can do. As well as your regular keyboards, you have a heap of synth sounds. And your synth sounds will have a lot of additional features. So if we hit the plus button here, we go to keyboard and we tap more sounds. If we go back to our main categories, down the side, you've got your keyboards, alchemy synth, you've got your classic bass lead and synth pads. You've got some FX here. You've got other instruments and you've even got some percussion. And you've even got custom instruments. So you can actually save your own different keyboard sounds, which is kind of cool. So if we go into one of the synth classics here, let's come in and go to our digital plucks. And we can actually see that we got some additional functions here. So we can... We can just play it just like we would. But over the left here, we've got a pitch bend wheel. And we've got a modulation wheel. So some of your synth sounds will have some different stuff. They'll also have four different controls here. This one has cutoff, 
It has a bit crush effect, it has the filter decay, and it has an amp decay. So we can use this to... to change our sound to pretty much anything, even really weird ones like that. Now, I mentioned that you can make your own custom sounds, but you can actually tap here, and if we want to save, so say we create a really cool sound, say I really like this sound for some reason. I can actually tap on here, and I can hit the save button, and let's just call this uh, Digital Plux Pete Edition. A kitchen, yeah, we can spell. And there you go, it throws it here in the rest of our stuff. So that's pretty cool. We can actually put the, we can save that. And then next time we come back, we go to the custom section and we can have that. So that's our synth sounds. What about our alchemy synth? Well, if you want even more control, instead of going to synth, if we go to alchemy synth, so this, this track needs a bass sound, right? Let's use an alchemy synth bass. What about something like the 70s classic synth bass? <laughs> That's a cool sound, yeah. Now look at all this business. Yeah, you got the same sort of stuff here. You got the same pitch bender modulation wheels. You got the same four knobs here, but you got all this business. So what this does is as we move this across, see how it's changing everything? It'll change those knobs there, but it's also changing if we scroll to the right, Check out all this business. Yeah, you got a whole bunch more control here. You got a heap of different knobs. You've got your XY pads that you can adjust the sound in here. And you've even got things over here, your, your attack, decay, sustain, release uh, as well. So you've got a heap of control here. And when you move these, it actually changes all the ones over here as well. So you can see, it's hard to see as you're doing it. But if we come over here uh, and we change it there, you can see it move. Not very well, uh, but it is changing. So we can decide, we can move this in here. And we want that kind of sound there. So that's cool. Uh, let's use our arpeggiator that we learned before to, to play in a bass sound with the Alchemy synth. But this time we want it to just do like maybe an eighth note. There you go. So now we can hit the record button. Let's get some uh, bass sound in here, shall we? Kind of hit a bit of a wrong note there, but that's okay. We can fix it in post, right? <laughs> there's, there's that, there's that dodgy note. Let's, um, let's fix that now, shall we? If we edit in there, this is a cool thing. With the piano sounds, you can come in and edit them as well. So, there you go. Done. Solved. Problem solved. All right. So, so there you go. We can use the alchemy synth as one of our other instrument sounds in here, and it works. An absolute treat. We also can use external instruments. So if you're using the keyboard here, you don't even, you're not limited to what's here in GarageBand. If we, instead of being in the keyboard section here, we come over to our external instrument section, you can use either InterApp Audio, or what I prefer to use is Audio Unit Plugins. Now the difference between those is subtle, but important. And there's videos here on the channel to explain that. But if we grab something from here, let's say go with the uh, Ravenscroft 275, one of my favorite piano instruments. Very nice sounding piano. So let's bring it in here. We'll turn the volume up because it's a little bit quiet now with all of our with all of our synth sounds. But then what we could do is you can see here, instead of it being the keyboard sound, it's just this little one here. And uh, we can actually record in. We can record in some some nice lead piano part to go along with everything else we got here. Now it's so quiet there because I've got all these synth sounds and I should have gone with uh, with something a little bit louder. But we'll turn everything down here just so that you can hear this piano sound coming over the top. Let's duplicate it out just to give it some more, some more volume here. There you go. We'll copy it and we'll paste another copy here just to give it double the volume to bring it back in like so. So probably should have gone with something more like the Moog Model D or some other sort of external instrument to work there. In fact, we can do things like that. Because if we go back to our external and we add in, let's just say instead of that, we wanted to use this Moog Model D, 
Let's grab this one, throw this on here, just use the default patch, I don't even know what it is. But the cool thing about all your keyboard sounds is that even between internal and external sounds, we can move them between, because they're just using MIDI information here, yeah? So you can move them in between everything, which is kind of cool. So we'll delete that one out, we'll delete that one out, and let's just see, we'll turn it down, because it's going to be loud now with the Model D. <laughs> Yeah, we need to play it in a little bit better than that. The one final thing here that is very, very cool. So if you've used GarageBand and you've tried to use things like guitar or strings or bass guitar, you'll know that it's kind of fun using the original one. So if you come into your dear guitar, it's kind of fun either using the chords here or playing some shredding lead. However, um, yeah, it, it's kind of difficult to get your head around that stuff. So, did you know that you can actually use your keyboard to play those instruments? So, instead of using the guitar instrument there, if we hit the plus button here and we go to the keyboard, we can tap the more sounds button here. We can go to main categories and right down the bottom here, this other section actually has some hidden gems in here. You got things like flutes and clarinets and oboes and bassoons. You got some horns. You got some strings. You got all of your world instruments and you've got all of your guitars and basses. So if we wanted to grab that same guitar sound here, we'll grab the Roots Rock guitar and... We can play it here using a keyboard. You can play it here using your... Uh, using your chords and you can even use autoplay. So you can get some pretty cool and funky sounds going on in here with any of your instruments just by going into that other section and choosing all of these very cool instruments. Even something like the Erhu can be yours. Right? Nice stuff there. So... There is so much to explore here with the keyboard sound. I hope you found this useful. Dive in, have a play, and create yourself a masterpiece in GarageBand.